Hello everyone, I am Aditya Pedredla and my poster is about simulating the refractive radiator transfer equation. This equation models light transport in scenes such as those shown here, a burning candle, mixed cocktails, mirages and even human tissue. What all these scenes have in common is that they contain both continuous refraction and scattering light transport effects. To see what I mean by continuous refraction, let's first consider the light ray as it moves from one medium to another. Because of refraction, the light ray bends once at the interface between the two mediums. As the number of interfaces increase, the number of times the light ray bends also increases. By continuous refraction, we refer to media where refractive index changes continuously and therefore light continuously refracts, resulting in curved light paths. The RRT applies to media where light not only refracts continuously but additionally gets scattered due to interactions with microscopic scattering particles. The combination of these two effects creates challenging rendering problem. We propose an efficient and unmanned solution for this problem to faithfully simulate scenes with continuously varying refractive index. How do we solve RRT and build a simulator? Let us begin with the case of a medium where there is only continuous refraction and no scattering. As mentioned earlier, light travels along curved paths inside such a medium. Given an initial point and direction, we can trace such curved paths by solving Hamilton's equations with numerical integrator. If the medium has only scattering and no continuous refraction, we model light transport using the radiator transfer equation. This equation is typically solved with Monte Carlo integration using techniques such as bidirectional path tracing. In bidirectional path tracing, we iterate over sampling paths. To trace a path, we start from the sensor and trace a random sensor subpath. And then we trace a random emitter subpath. We join the vertices with a straight line to create a light path. If we have both continuous refraction and scattering, we can repeat the same steps and replace the straight line ray tracing with refractive ray tracing. However, the problem is we cannot join the source and sensor subpaths with a straight line. We have to find a curve to make these direct connections. So, we need to find a curve that passes through initial position xa and final position xf and satisfies the differential equations. This is known as boundary value problem in the literature. We know how to solve a similar problem, namely given initial position xi and initial velocity vi, compute the curve for any distance. This is known as IVP or refractive rate tracing in the literature. We use numerical integration. We know how to solve IVP, so one way to solve BVP is to try different initial velocities and hope that we find a curve that passes through xf. Instead, v, let us consider a point on IVP after we do refractive ray tracing for a propagation length tau. We define error as the shortest distance between XF and IVP curve which we can compute by minimizing over propagation length tau. Note that this error is a function of the initial velocity vi. Now, we can restate BVP as a solution that minimizes this error while varying vi. Fortunately, both the error function and IVP are differentiable and we can compute the derivative of the error with respect to VI analytically with little overhead. We use gradient descent techniques to compute the direct connections. For mathematical details, please refer to our paper. This is a simple scene containing aquarium filled with sugar water. Due to varying concentration of the sugar in the water, the refractive index is also continuously varying. A laser beam propagating through the solution refracts and continuously scatters resulting in a curved light trajectory as shown in the right. Our formulation can easily be extended to time of flight cameras. The time of travel here accounts for the change in the speed of light due to the varying refractive index. The spheres are either made up of constant refractive index as shown in the left or continuously varying refractive index as shown in the right. Quite a lot of things are happening here, so let us look a couple of times. The effective refractive index of continuously refractive lens is higher than constant refractive index lens, and hence light travels slower in continuous refractive media than constant refractive media. Rainbow spectrum or chromatic separation can be seen here as refractive index is a function. On the left, we show an experimental setup we have built. With ultrasound off, we can see a completely diffused image and with ultrasound on, the tissue becomes continuously refractive and the photons are threaded through the scattering medium. The image on the left is a caustic referred to as quadripole and used to eliminate four regions deep inside the scattering medium. The second figure is an image rendered with BDPT and the third one is rendered with previous photon mapping techniques for the same runtime. Clearly, our technique is better than photon mapping. For more details of the technique, please visit our project page that also contains the bits of our source code. Our post ID is 8, please visit us.